we're going to be talking about objects and classes. The cool thing about classes is it kind of creates this object that has a certain state to it. And it contains a bunch of different properties within each object that can hold different properties. So I can create two objects of the same type that have different values within it. So to create a class, you have to start with a special class keyword followed by the name of the class. So today, I'm really hungry, so we're going to make a cake. Um, so I think cake is a really cool example of how objects work because you can make a class called cake and you can make many different cake objects, let's say a birthday cake or a wedding cake or just any kind of cake. So we're going to make a class cake and you just do this by saying literally class and cake with an uppercase C because that's how we declare our classes and our classes are going to hold uh, different attributes that a cake has. So like using common sense you're gonna know that a cake has like a flavor. So in this example, we're gonna have a string variable that holds the flavor of the cake. And we're also gonna have a number variable that holds how many tiers a cake has and a Boolean value uh, saying how tasty the cake is. If it's tasty, true or false. So within our class, we want to initialize these properties with some default kind of values so that when we declare a new cake, it'll already have some things kind of pre-written into it. So like, it won't have any tears, it won't have a flavor, and it won't be tasty yet because we just made the cake. We haven't given it any of these, we haven't reassigned any of these properties yet. So now that we've created this class called cake, we'll have to create specific objects. And this is the same for any class you'll create. So to create a specific object, we'll say let b-day be a cake and then set it equal to a new cake because it's a brand new cake, it's not like any other. Then following that, you know how I mentioned earlier that there are the three different attributes in a cake class? Well, we're going to need to set those equal to something too. So let's just say in this example, our cake is going to be chocolate flavored. So you would say um, b-day, which is the name of our cake, dot flavor, which is the specific property that we're accessing, and we're setting it equal to our string value, and in this case is going to be chocolate, in double quotes. And then following that, we're also going to set uh, the tiers of our cake equal to numbers. So you're going to say b-day dot tiers. And in this example, we're going to use one because we want one little, one fun little tier on our cake. Little small cake. Little small cake. <laughs> yeah. And so we, we use its name and the name of the property to access it because we want it to be specific to this cake. Like if I were to create another cake, we'd have to use its name. We're not going to, we can't just say flavor equals chocolate because that doesn't make any sense. It's like if I were to say to a group of people, hey, person, jump. You would say, well, we're all people. Oops. Which one? Yeah. <laughs> so you have, to, you have to specifically talk to that object by name, which in this case is B-Day. So we've already reassigned our tiers variable and our flavor variable to something like one chocolate, because that's what we want. But we still haven't reassigned our is tasty. Um, variable. And to spice things up a bit, we can actually access those same two properties they were talking about, talking about before to decide what kind, what is tasty will be set equal to. So in this example, let's say our conditions for a cake being tasty are that it is, ha it is a chocolate flavored cake and the tiers are greater than zero, like it has tiers. So we can actually make an if statement and say if b-day dot um, flavor is equal to chocolate, which is what we have, and you can uh, conjoin it with another condition saying, and b-day dot tiers is greater than zero. So if those are true, we're going to set b-day dot is tasty to true. I bet you're wondering, why do we need classes and objects? It, it seems like a lot of work to just store some variables, right? Well, it kind of comes to play when we do functions, right? So. What we did before where we changed the flavor of is tasty, we could put all of that in its own function. So we could have this function called uh, taste test, for example, and it takes an object that's a cake. So every time you're guaranteed anything that you enter into this function is going to have the properties tears, flavor, and is tasty. So in there we can check to see if there's more than zero tiers and if the flavor is chocolate and we can change tasty within that class. But the difference is here, we're, set, we're gonna enter in a cake to, as our parameter. So within the function, we're going to refer to that cake by what we said its name is in the parameters, which in this case, we're gonna say C. So anytime within here, we would access that object's properties by saying C dot is tasty, C dot tears, C dot flavor. 
to be able to access the properties of the specific cake we put into the function.